peace. This is Jabari Mwadanet Tur, uh, or you could call me Kale Kingpin, JB, or what some may say, Daddy Watoto. Uh, I know that's kind of a <laughs> contradiction, Daddy Watoto. Um, Watoto meaning children, that's why I heal you. But I am the father of, of course, the Watoto from the Nile, godfather, um, uncle of many of the children in Watoto for, for the, from the Nile. So it came about the Daddy Watoto thing because we actually started an email and it was just something easy when we said we talk about Watoto from the Nile we said we would call it Daddy Watoto. So that's how you get Daddy Watoto from the Nile. But I want to talk about Watoto from the Nile and why it is that we do what we do and how we do it with these young girls. So we take these young female sisters and we want to help them to become leaders in the community. We want to have them in the spirit of sisters like Harriet Tubman, Madam C.J. Walker, Fannie Lou Hamer, and many of our great warrior queens that's been here on this earth. I mean, the Francis Crest Wells, and they're still here today. Um, yeah, sisters like Sister Soldier, and many of those great sisters of the day. So what we're going to do is, with Daddy Watoto series, this is going to be episode one. 2015 July the 21st 2015, 2015. and I want to tell you how we kind of got started with this group by Toto from the Nile uh, started when the, my children were young and they would always make up different songs different things of that nature and so from there we had the radio on one day and we heard a little Wayne song at that time it was single and what well, we actually have been doing some music a little bit before that been doing some little things but when i heard the song on the radio and how disgusting it was i said man i talked to the girls about it. i said you know what do you think about that you know we talked about it and they said i said we, we need to do something about that i had already been writing some music myself we had a group called uh conscious heads and we put an album out back then and did pretty good very conscious album. Then we had another young group that came out of our organization, uh, which was Soul Survivors Nation, came out of that came out of the group, and they were called Sons of Nat. And very uh, a lot of energy with these young people. I mean, they were on fire. We would do talent shows, win talent shows, different things. And then down the line, as they started to go to college and all, it was um, me and my children, and so we decided to do the Watoto from the Nile thing. And they actually came up with the name because at that time my daughters attended a African Center school here in Baltimore so we out of Baltimore and you know they were called the, the Watoto they called children Watoto and so they came up with the thing uh, Watoto from the Nile when we sit in the car one day so when we heard the Lil Wayne song a little bit down the line we said we gotta do something about this so actually I started writing songs. I had already been writing some other things. And I said, you know what? Let me go ahead and write a song. We talked about it, me and the girls, and it will reflect what they thought and some of the things that I was thinking about hip hop of the day. All right, so this lecture series, uh, this series we call um, the Daddy Y Toto uh, video series, we're gonna break down music videos. We're gonna break down some of your favorite rap artists. And by the way, let me just say this from the start that I love hip hop music. I love hip hop. I'm a fan of hip hop. I got my beginnings back at being a DJ. I used to call myself DJ Hardcore back in the day. Uh, I love hip hop music. I love it to this day. And even some of the songs that's out today, I like the sound of the song, but I hate the message that's in the song. So let's just lay that out from the start. I am a warrior for our people. I fight for our youth. Um, speaking in prisons, doing many different things. I love our youth death I love them but I do have to show where and where our music has gone as a people and why we find ourselves in the situation we find ourselves in today not just solely because of music but because of everything because of racism white supremacy and many and on many different levels but the industry has changed so much that you can't get into the industry mainstream unless you're talking about death and destruction so unless you talk about death and destruction so we want to, we, we put these, these young ladies together, we said we want to breathe life, and they, they, since life comes from the womb of a woman, 
when we brought these young ladies together, we said we want to start breathe life back into music. We want to breathe life back into music. So we called it the LGE movement, life giving energy movement that we would start. Love giving energy movement because it's so much hatred. And as you'll find as we go through this series of videos, as we break them down step by step and you'll see the message that's inside the music then you wonder what's going on with our children today and you'll hear me say several different times it wasn't like when we were coming up I'm 40 years old and we had the public enemies we had the Queen Latifah we had the um, the, the MC lights and the big daddy Kane which means um, King Asiatic none equal uh, man, we had so many the brand Nubians, and we, the list can go on and on and on and on. But we had those people there to provide balance. Because when I came up, that's what we listened to. And De La Souls and all those different folks, you know what I mean? Like fun music and just groovy music a lot of times. I mean, some of it was bad, but it was in a small percentage that this music was bad during that time. So then... As the NWA starts to come on the scene, and and many, and that's when it really took a change. And I ain't gonna lie. I mean, I, I mean, to this day, I mean, I love the sound of NWA. I mean, that's that's where we came up. But to be honest, NWA was one of those things that helped to corrupt us as a people. And from there, I know uh, me personally, from guys around, a lot of my friends around me. We started to, hey, they go that pitch over there, you know what I mean? They go that B over there, and hey, yo, B's ain't, you know, this, that, and other. And we developed that type of mentality because that's what NWA brought in the game. And I know it was a lot of stuff was going on in the hood, but I, like I said, I didn't know that to that level until NWA came into the game. So, like I said, I love our people. This is no diss on our youth because I love the youth, but I do understand the manipulation that's being done to our people by the record industry, by these uh, white corporate folks who run things. You know, these white uh, Jewish conglomerates, you know, different people who run the industry. I understand the manipulation that they have on our people. And they make it so, in order for you to make money, that you have to really literally sell your soul to the devil. So... We want to get started with this right now. So, how, the way we got started, so we heard the Lil Wayne song. Uh, before that, a little bit, let me backtrack. There was a song by Soldier Boy. Y'all remember Soldier Boy? Soldier Boy, all in this. Ooh, y'all remember that, right? And we had a party one day with our organization. And at that party, we were dancing and we were doing some things you know pretty conscious event you know having fun with our children and everything they started doing the, the soldier boy the little crank that dance and you know man we had the children and you know man and i even got up and i tried to do the dance and i said like, you know man i'm doing the dance and trying to dance trying to get it in whatever and i went home that day that night i even went to youtube and I went online how to how to do the soldier boy dance and so me and my daughters we was in the house we training on you know what I'm saying like next time yeah we go to that party we gonna know this soldier boy joint we gonna know this as a team as a unit so <laughs> as I started to listen to so, so you know we started to learn you know listen to the instruction and all learn the dance and all uh somebody called me uh maybe later that day or something and they said man you know um and then I said, me and my daughters, we in here practicing on our little soldier boy dance. We getting a little practicing. And so the, the guy said, said, man, you, you might want to take a look at, you know what I mean, what that song is talking about. You know what I mean? I heard a few things about, you know what I mean, what that song may be about. So I said, man, what you talking about? He said, yeah, man, it's like about some kind of sex, sexual thing or something like that. And I'm like, no, nah, man, come on, man. That song ain't, that song, come on, it's just a nice little, it's a nice little friendly children dance. Right? So, I said, all right, well, look, let me check it out. Let me check into it. So, lo and behold, I went to the internet, and I just pulled the words of the song up on the internet. And I started reading, like, whoa, wait a minute. What is this? What is this? What is this song talking about? Soldier Boy off in this. I'll show it to you. Just give me a second. Let's pull the words up right now.
So now that you got a chance to look at the words of this song, and you can pull it up yourself on Google. Now, let's show you the music video. Check it out. All right, so let's go into Super Soak. What does the Super Soak mean in this very disgusting song? And the problem that I really got with this song, like I said, as you see, you, you just saw the video and you saw how children are all involved in this video. Another thing, when I go to children parties, very inappropriate. I heard this song playing at different children parties as well as today in the music that I hear is it appropriate for a daisy loaf or different things that we go oh man we got a special when we go into her video but is it appropriate to play these songs at a child's birthday party <laughs> so let's go into super so like I said this is about five years back in order to go forward I'm telling you how this got started and why I really got into breaking down these videos okay so now you go into super so that hoe that's what he said and super soak that hoe please i'm not trying to be vulgar i'm just laying out some truth to you here today you can go check this out you can go research this and check it out super soak that hoe means to ejaculate directly on or all over a female that's what super soak that hoe means um one part you hear the robocop and it means to ejaculate semen into a bucket and to invert it into your lady's friend's head. So this is what you're doing when actually uh, you singing a song, Robocop and Super Soap. This is what they have our children singing and dancing to. So this is why I'm mad. This is why I. This is why we actually do this stuff with Why Total from the Nile. Now, uh, Super Soap that hoe. Is when you're having sex with a girl, D style, you pull out and then you ejaculate on her back or butt. When she tells you to wipe it off, you pretend to, and when she wakes up, she has the bed sheet stuck to her back like a Superman's cape. <laughs> Did you know that? Now, look. Crank that. And then we're going to leave this alone. Crank that refers to the act of, you know, masturbation as indicated by the lyrics. Watch me crank that, soldier boy, then superman that, that hoe. Or watch me masturbate on a woman's back before sticking a sheet on her back, causing a cape-like effect. Brothers and sisters, it's a lot of trickery going on in the music industry today and one of the things that they must do is to keep our people confused this is why it's so important so when we organize these young children why Toto from the Nile if you're listening today and you have children we created this music so that we can bring love and life back to music because our children are being so brainwashed trained to be sex addicts trained to be drug addicts trained to be food addicts, trained to be any kind of addict that you can think of, this is what they're doing to our people today. They're trained to be uh, 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 fetched dogs, you know what I mean, to, to do their evil work, to promote black-on-black -black violence, to, to promote uh, 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 yeah killing and going to prison. Because we do know 
ultimately that the people who are involved in the prison industry are also involved in the music industry and it's all connected it's not it's nothing that's separate so they use the music to fuel like gas in a car to fuel their agenda to get out people in the prison when they build these new prisons they have to put people inside those prisons so if you go in the prison they make money if you take the drugs they still make money because they make money because they produce them kill each other and all those different things the illegal gun industry they make a lot of money from the hood this is all a win-win situation for them so it ain't about putting no blame on the soldier boys and all of them yeah he you know I me mean? he has he does have to answer for some of the stuff and a lot of people who actually sell their soul to the devil but we have to create a better way for our children you say that you want your children to grow up in the right way let's start this movement this LGE life love giving energy movement get on board but what we're doing with Watoto from the now leave you just as we take you out this is episode one and we're gonna be doing these episodes all the time we got a lot of people to cover different songs we're gonna be breaking down the lyrics uh, I hope that you tune in check us out we love y'all a hey, get that album from my total from the now it's called the chosen one just click that link below in the description box get that album get that music a hey, let's make a change Peace.